Game Dev Journey. Yeah, so I've always been interested in game development, not having had any formal training in game development, but rather in, you know, programming and, and business logic and, and that sort of thing. And I, I was always looking for a tool, you know, that would be user-friendly and beginner-friendly. I, I went through a couple of game engines and came across Goudreau, and it's just one of those, you know, one of those programs where the, the workflow just clicks. It really makes so much sense. Um, and uh, so, so I thought, well, there's not a lot of resources online for learning Godot besides the manual, um, which is kind of very technical. And so I wanted to make something that was approachable for newcomers to the engine and show how you could make games in a fun way and, and make the learning fun. Uh, so that was really my approach. Um, with with the book it, and really it, it's the book that I wanted to have when I was starting so I hope that people enjoy it that way uh, I would describe it as Lego for game development oh. I think that's a that's a good way to put it because you can build build the blocks you need for the game that you're making if you've if you've ever built Lego and looked at all the pieces that all spread out in front of you the possibilities are endless for what you could build by plugging the right pieces together and i think godot uh is uh, you can take a, a, a similar mental model for godot yeah well you know I, like i said before i often describe it as lego for game development because you know in in godot everything is, is built from small uh, specialized nodes. So a Sprite 2D, um, a rigid body 2D, a, a camera 3D, a collision shape, even user interface ele elements, um, you know, they're all nodes. And a scene is um, simply a collection of these nodes arranged to represent something meaningful, you know, like a, a player or an enemy, or it could even be the whole level. So for, for beginners, this is incredibly intuitive because you know you're encouraged to think in terms of modular reusable pieces uh, rather than one giant script that that's trying to control um, everything uh, in your game so if we compare this to to another game engine and say unity um, beginners they often get overwhelmed early on because they're dropped straight into you know this world of of game objects and long lists of, of components um and and that system is very powerful um but you know complexity it, it isn't always beginner friendly um so godot simplifies all that um and, and the learning curve is is less steep because uh, every behavior um is a node and every object um is a scene so in the book i recommend structuring a simple 2d or 3D game by breaking everything down into its own scene. So you've got a player scene, maybe an enemy scene, a collectible scene, and then a level scene. And then each of these scenes can be instanced into the game, just like those reusable Lego blocks. So when you update the player scene, every level that uses the player automatically benefits from that update. And you know it's this modular approach. Um, it, it not only keeps the project clean, but it teaches beginners good software architecture without them actually realizing it and and you know they learn about composition inheritance encapsulation and the separation of concerns just by working with Godot's node system and that's incredibly empowering for someone that's starting their game dev journey so in the book um i describe signals as a a safe built-in messaging um, system that it lets nodes talk to each other without hard wiring everything together. So many developers that they might come from Unity and they might be used to this classic pattern of having one script directly call another script. So say when when the player touches this thing, call that function on that object. Now this works, but it creates a problem. In it it makes everything very um, tightly coupled. 
So if one thing changes, then everything else breaks. So Godot's signal system encourages a more flexible approach. So instead of saying, call my function directly, you know, the node will simply say, well, I will emit this signal when something important happens. And anything else in the scene can listen out for that signal and respond in the way that it needs to. So for example, um, your player scene, it might emit a, a health change signal. So the user interface is listening and it updates the health bar. Um, enemies might listen and then they might react. They might get aggressive, more aggressive, or something like that. The, the audio system could play a sound effect at that point. Um, the player, the, the, the key is the player itself doesn't need to know any of those other systems. It can just stay clean and self-contained. So signals really fit quite beautifully into Godot's um, scripting workflow because they they boost clarity basically you know your player code controls just the player your user interface code controls just the user interface so this results in projects that scale better um, they're less breakable and basically for beginners they're much easier to understand um, you know watching new developers realize oh you know, I don't need to drag or references everywhere or, or write, you know, those giant controller scripts like Enrique was talking about. That's one of the best parts of teaching Godot because signals, you know, they can help them think more modularly, which is exactly the mindset that professional game developers use. And there's this, um, you know, kind of mantra for Godot. It's called call down, but signal up. So when we say call down, we mean that a parent node, you know, like the main level that they can reach down and they can tell all the children what to do. But the, for signaling up, the, the child node, like say a collectible in the level, it, it should never look for the parent. It should just emit a signal, like a radio broadcast saying I was collected. And then everything that's listening for it can do what they need to do with that. So this changes the workflow entirely. Basically, it means you can take that coin, you can move it to a different level or a completely different game, and it's not going to crash because it's not looking for a specific scoreboard. It just shouts out, I was collected. And then the game can decide what to do with that information. So it makes the game logic, you know, much more flexible. It prevents the project from becoming this fragile house of cards. And ultimately, um, Godot doesn't just help beginners make games. It, it helps them build systems. And that's what Enrique goes into depth with in, in his book. But, you know, by forcing you to think, nodes and, and signals, it, it actually teaches you to be a better programmer and, and it doesn't matter what engine you use. Well, the biggest mind shift, mind shift uh, to, to make is to, is to treat, treat each uh, game object coming from other engines in, in isolation rather than seeing them as this monolithic thing with with a, with a list of components you know you, you you make everything uh so that it can stand on its own two feet and then you instance them you know to make this chain which becomes the completed level or or, or the completed component but the biggest help is really just going to be either by enrique's book or my book depending on which level you feel that you're on because they've been written they, they've been written to guide you through the transition and that they're, they're, they're purpose built to, to, to help you, you you know learn and and develop your own thinking about it though.